This is It's Not in the Syllabus podcast, the how-tos of a student beyond classroom walls. This is the podcast where you, yes you, get to learn what they don't teach you at school and ace that test called life, or at least get a passing grade and get by. It's Not in the Syllabus is a podcast brought to you by the Adventist International Institute of Advanced Studies, together with the Student Association, where we feature stories by the students and for the students. Join us as we discover life lessons you surely need. Welcome everyone to another episode of It's Not in the Syllabus, the outdoors of the students beyond class wall. In the month of August, we are talking about the meaningful life in graduate studies or graduate school. Uh, in the month of August, we are talking about a meaningful life of graduates. So today, we will be talking about the importance of belonging, finding your spiritual community. And I have the privilege to, to have this conversation with a professor, a friend, someone who I have known for long, and someone who is willing to share with us today. Dr. Wortland, welcome. Uh, thank you, Eddie. Good. I'm happy to be here. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Thank you. So, you know, uh, I'll briefly introduce Dr. Watland, and uh, he has, well, vast uh, experience in his own field, particularly pastoral field. I know he's a chaplain. I know he's also a PhD in applied theology, and he wrote one of the best dissertations that I can ever read in applied theology, which is about... Uh, 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 Theology of service to people with special needs. Theology of service with people with special needs. Sometime we will have maybe particularly inviting him to come and share with us his his dissertation. So, and I also know uh, he is married to one wife. You know, in fact, <laughs> <laughs> this idea of Adventists introducing individual like he's married to one wife. Are we supposed to have two or three more wives? So he's married, and he's married to Mary. Uh -huh. Correct, yes. even right, Mary, which we also greet her wherever you'll be watching this this podcast. So let us dive into our conversation. But before that, how 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 are you doing so far? <sighs> I'm so happy to be here with you, Eddie, Good. to this platform and to share with our audience. So I'm excited to share a few experiences with mm -hmm. our friends online. I have no pretension that I know everything to say about the topic. Correct. But I will share at least my own experience when it comes to belonging and in terms of spiritual community. Good, good. In fact, this podcast is about sharing one's experience. It's uh -huh. not that we invite experts. Sometimes we do invite experts in the field, but at the end of the day, we want to we want people to share their their yeah. experience. So, what is what is the benefit of finding uh, a spiritual community? What values that it carries? Uh, I think. You know, the sense of, of belonging, mm -hmm. it is one of our basic needs. And when you feel mm -hmm. like you don't belong, yeah. it's a feeling of rejection. Mm. It's a feeling of uh, not being worthy of, of belonging to a specific group or a Correct. specific community. Correct. So when you find a place where it is obvious yeah. that you belong there, mm -hmm. It, it offers you a better atmosphere to Correct. grow, mm. to learn, mm. and to develop your full potential. Correct. And this is what one can um, benefit from finding mm -hmm. a meaningful, a significant uh, spiritual community. Yeah. And later on during this conversation, I will share my own mm. experience in terms of benefit, what I benefited Correct. from belonging to a spiritual community. Actually, this is going to be our, maybe we're going to dive into the benefits of belonging to a spiritual community, in particular because you mentioned that uh, there are certain benefits uh -huh. that one gets when he belongs. I remember, and this is maybe widely known, that we as a human being, we are social beings. God uh -huh. created us to 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 belong to particular groups. And there's a guy who said, no man is an island on his own. Yes. So that we need to socialize. Exactly. But what are some of the benefits of being part of uh, a community, particularly a spiritual community? My friend. <laughs> One I would mention is, mm -hmm. it is easier for you mm -hmm. to navigate life in general mm -hmm. when you belong wow. to a spiritual community. Yeah. I personally, at some point in my life, mm -hmm. 
I was stuck as to what would I do in the future? What should I do in the future? Wow. And then the only thing that kept me going, mm. that helped me uh, keep my head above water, mm -hmm. it was the sense of belonging to the IAS community. Wow, wow, and wow. Maybe you know, you know, have a hint <laughs> of what I'm talking about and later on we will explain. Sure. But it was that thing mm. that kept me going. So God used that community mm. to help me keep my head above water. And today I'm... Um, eternally grateful for correct, that one correct, correct, and i'm correct. wondering what would it be for me mm -hmm. if i did not have this support from community mm -hmm. and what is the experience of others not yeah. having that type of support in such time of big trials correct you know uh, research has proven that uh, peer support and community support is one of the benefits that helps graduates to achieve their graduates' uh, desires and goal. But at the end of the day, we look at it in the opposite way. The opposite way will be, they are those who uh, retrieve themselves or refrain from belonging to a community. Uh, we also have this personality type. They are more, some are more introvert, some are extrovert. But at the end of the day, if you keep yourself away from communities, uh, how do you then, as a graduate, going to survive i doubt you will even survive <laughs> yes, i doubt I, I doubt you will even survive yeah. because uh during my six years of study here at ias uh, i'm grateful for that uh community support i found from the mm -hmm. african community and from the latin community friends from i had from those communities yeah Man, it, it was the thing mm -hmm. that kept me growing because because at some point here at IAS, mm -hmm. I had no fellow countrymen on campus. Mm, I yes. had no direct family members on campus. Mm -hmm. And then even the French speakers were yeah. fewer on campus at yeah. a specific time. Yeah. But my belonging to the African community and my sharing with the Latin community mm -hmm. and the prayer times and that even doing our classrooms, you know, uh, whenever you are having a class, those from your community will get closer to them yeah. naturally. <laughs> it <Yeah>. happens. <laughs> and then you find support, emotional support, even academic support from them. Mm -hmm. So, yes, it is undeniable. Yeah. Um, community support is something that makes a difference in your graduate studies. So, it, it, basically, it means we, we can be part of our own community but it can also be part of other people's community. Sure. And in fact, I just give us this atmosphere wherein a, 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 a someone from Athi can be can mingle with Africans, can mingle with Latin, Latin community. Speaking Spanish. Speaking Spanish. <laughs> and in fact, you, you know how to speak Spanish. This is here that I learned Spanish. <laughs> it is by mingling with the Latin community. So that, those are the benefits, you know. Yes. You, you have learned the language. In as much that your country is in the South South America. It is, sent, it is in Carib uh, Car the Caribbean, mm -hmm. which is between Southern America and Northern America. It's yeah. the middle part of is America. It? And then the, the language that is most the most spoken there is Spanish. Spanish, for sure. yeah. And then the Latin community has the, those people from South America and from Central America and from the Caribbean. So La uh, Spanish is the dominant language. <laughs> so whenever I joined, I joined, joined that community doing yeah. midweek prayers and everything, mm -hmm. it is Spanish that we speak. Yes, and yes. And then that this, this is... Uh, the time I learned Spanish from them and it stays with me. <laughs> Have you ever preached in Spanish? I even taught one intensive class in Mexico in Spanish. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> and this is because of community. Exactly. This is because of the environment that allows you to mingle with others and learn their yeah, language. Exactly. Uh, why don't you guys have a French class? So <laughs> I can I can I can also learn French. I mean I know how to speak. Do I know how to speak? I understand Spanish. Mm -hmm. But I I think I understand English. <laughs> but I need now French and I can't leave Ayers without... Maybe that's the challenge for the next <laughs> few months here to, to create that class. To create that class. Yeah, and I yeah. think I will, I, will, I will ask you accountable for, <laughs> <laughs> you never for, know. for <laughs> that. So you, you, we, you spoke of the benefit and the benefit is well-being. Uh -huh. um, what could be more when it comes to the benefit of belonging to a spiritual community? Uh, spiritual growth. You know, mm. we are given this time here on earth, Correct. just to prepare our eternity. So Amen. that's the most important thing, one, mm -hmm. as to prepare yeah. while you are here in the flesh. So a spiritual community offer you that unique opportunity to mm -hmm. grow spiritually. Mm -hmm. So whenever um, 
you might lack of knowledge whenever you might fall some somehow mm -hmm. there will be another brother another sister yeah. to help you carry through mm -hmm. so spiritual community a good spiritual environment mm -hmm. help you go spiritually mm -hmm. so help you go toward your life goal which is eternity wow because when it comes to spiritual community there's element of prayer uh -huh. and in every i think the second midweek of the month the second the third and the fourth uh -huh. i as organized midweek by community yes. and, and it's within this midweek program that we we pray together and their testimonies you know uh there are times i'll share my experience there are times that i've been to uh midweek community uh midweek prayer mm -hmm. where i did not know where my next fees will come from mm -hmm. but just to hear that i wasn't alone in this struggle and someone could say mm -hmm. I'm also struggling and then we pray by the next Monday we were able to pay our fees and and I agree with you that spiritual growth is one and in fact you also learn that you're not alone not alone in this yeah. struggle yeah and, yeah, and yeah I think in as much that uh, there are people who don't like to share their prayer requests but I encourage the people to be open up in fact we need to be vulnerable in church and say okay this is what I'm struggling with. This is something with. I personally learned from community. Yeah. From community because in the first place, I was not so um, open in yeah. terms of being vulnerable, in yeah. terms of uh, sharing prayer requests or, or testimony. Correct. But I learned that mm -hmm. through community here at IAS, I see myself sharing yeah. <laughs> prayer requests <laughs> and testimony from Sabbath school. You know, that uh, English Sabbath school class, we have English yeah. B. Yeah. Uh, so it's our habit to ask for prayer requests and, and Thanksgiving. Mm -hmm. And I see myself sometimes sharing and say, oh, man, I grew. I grew in, on this aspect <laughs> of my life because in the past, I never did this thing. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So community help you being vulnerable mm -hmm. in a safe place. So mm -hmm. it's a safe place to be vulnerable. Mm -hmm. And then vulnerability actually helps you grow Amen. because you allow others to come to your weaknesses and then to help you to grow. lift you up mm, yeah. now let's talk about the don'ts and do's within the spiritual community uh what are some of the things that one has to do when he's part of a community okay mm. that's a very tough one <laughs> <laughs> that's a i can give you one i can give you an hint and a hint will be respect yes. no we i'm coming from africa i'm coming from africa angola and there are Africans here where they come from different part of Africa. Mm -hmm. In as much we are coming from the same continent, we do things differently. Mm -hmm. But there's one thing that connects us and that will be respect, yeah. tolerance. Exactly. And what could be more, some of other things? Yeah, uh, respect is fundamental mm -hmm. in terms of uh, 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 life in community. Correct, correct. And then also I think we have to learn we have to research and learn about the other. Sometimes mm -hmm. our differences, instead of separating us, it can be uh, the riches of, right. the, of the community, Correct. but the deficit could be a lack of knowledge about mm. our differences. Mm. So someone has to continuously learn about the others, to Correct. discover the, 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 the other person. Uh, so respect and, <laughs> and knowledge is, is interesting. And then good communication. Wow, I like that, a good, good communication. communication. Never assume, mm -hmm. sometimes assuming, can cause problem yeah. unnecessarily. Yeah, yeah. So good communication is something also uh, that can help. Uh, mm -hmm. I think the list can go on and on. Yes. But those ones we can point pinpoint them as to their yeah, respect, knowledge, good communication. Respect, knowledge, good communication, and I will add also humility. Yes. And the fact that we should be uh, we should be responsible to say. Not everything that in my community are done on the best way. Mm -hmm. and not everything in someone's community are also done in the best mm -hmm. in the best way. Like what I'm trying to say, there's no best way for one community. So you have to remain open. 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 Be open. And and <laughs> I usually I usually reprove some of my friends who say, you know, in my country they do this. Mm -hmm. I say, well, you are <laughs> not in your country now. It, it's now yeah. time for you to learn how other countries yeah, sure. also do the same the same thing. We talk about respect, we talk about knowledge, we talk about communication. What about, when we talk about community engagement, there's always gossip. Uh -huh. There's always, uh, in this French one, they say concosa. Nah, this That's one, the only this one is detrimental. <laughs> this and, and in fact, it separated community members uh -huh. when there is gossip. Uh -huh. and, and most of our gossips, we come through prayer requests. We hear, oh, this guy struggling with this? Uh -huh. And then instead of bringing us to prayer, we gossip. How can we 
come about? Uh, how can we get rid of this uh, bad habit? This one, we have to acknowledge it mm -hmm. and pray on it. Amen. And e even uh, your close friends, uh, those you are, you have your most intimate conversation with. Correct. Try to have them call mm -hmm. as accountable partners. Yeah. Let them know that you want to get rid get rid of gossiping yeah. so that they may hold you accountable whenever you tend to mm. to go this way yeah. because uh, gossiping is, is no joke it's mm. something that can cause your eternal life mm. because even uh, in James it says that tongue it's a yeah. small thing yeah <laughs> but, but can you yeah so that's very detrimental for for community and to get rid of gossip is simple you just say hey i don't want to hear this I don't want to talk about someone's business. And, and s at some point, we can also be, uh, uh, our tongue can even call for talking about other people's business. Doc, uh, tell us. Before you move on yeah. to that one, I would add, uh, me and my wife, we have this principle. Mm -hmm. uh, we say um, people should never be the subject of our conversation. We, right. con we have conversation about things about ideas, yeah. about plan, about project, but we never entertain conversation about people. people. Mm -hmm. And most, Im most importantly, when we are uh, talking to other people, not between ourselves, like yeah. with friends and family members, the topic of the conversation should never be people, people. people's life. Yeah. No, we talk about things, project, we talk, talk about our own lives, yeah. but not about people, because that's when, that's when gossip starts. Yeah, <laughs> in fact, someone said, nobody could talk about someone's business. Okay, nobody should talk about my business in front of you and you become so comfortable. Yeah. So when the person talks me in my absence and you as a friend, you're listening, you're entertaining, the question is, why is why are you, you are so, part of the problem? You already. are also part of the problem. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So we move away from the do's and don'ts in our spiritual community. Mm -hmm. But how can someone participate actively participate in a spiritual community? Uh, first of all, you have to make time for it. Mm. Know that you are part of a community. You want it. It's part of your life. Correct. Never get too busy uh, to maintain your community life. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, you might find yourself yourself being isolated. Mm. You might self yourself being burned out. You must create time for mm. community. Mm -hmm. So that's the first thing to enhance your community life. Not only creating time of, uh, for, for community life, you must be involved mm -hmm. in community service. Mm. I like be that. Involved in community service. Eddie, yeah. I, I don't know how can I put it. Yeah. But there is joy in serving others. Amen, amen. There is joy in serving others with your time, with your gifts, yeah, and with yeah. your talents. Correct, correct. So what we know from the church is, is true. There are blessings in it. Mm -hmm. But on top of uh, the many blessings you yeah. have in it, yeah. there is joy. There's Sometimes joy of joy, they, they cannot remove from mm -hmm. you. Your heart is so happy yeah, knowing yeah. that you are helping your community, your friends. Man. Yeah, and in fact, I as one of the one of the the, the values is service, uh -huh. and in, in, in there are many clubs where students can do those activities, and they also within the communities, they are also part of of doing services. For instance, I'll speak about the African community. Uh -huh. We have plan of of maybe visiting one of the barangays, barangay is a municipality in the Philippines, uh -huh. uh, where our nearby municipalities yes. where we are going to see what are the needs and what can we as a community mm -hmm. but this, uh, can contribute. And in fact, I, I, I make this an uh, invitation for whoever wants to join, just get in touch with the African community and then maybe some announcement will come. Uh, Doc, things are not always smooth uh -huh. in a spiritual uh, community. There is one thing that I learned and I, as I do in my reading, was uh, lack of identity, lack of community identity. Because mm -hmm. there are people who are from one community, but they don't identify themselves as one. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you know, and people say, no, 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 I don't want to be part of this community. But in as much that you come from athe, you're not want to become, or not be, want to associate with, uh, how do you say, Asians? Uh, Asians? <laughs> yeah, Asians. <laughs> Asians. <laughs> Asians. So you don't want to associate with them. So what advice can you give to individuals who said, I don't want to be identified with my community, but I would like to identify with someone else's community? Um, what I've learned is the more you don't want to embrace your mm -hmm. own identity, mm -hmm. the more you will find yourself 
without mm. any identity at all. Say that again. <laughs> say I mean say it, you know, we can just pause it right there. <laughs> yeah. right. Which yeah. camera? Which camera? <laughs> the more you refuse to embrace your yeah. identity, is the more you will find yourself without any identity, identity. at all. That's wow. how it is. That's deep. So the best thing you can do, the faster you do it, the best it is for you to mm-hmm. embrace your identity. Wow. And uh that's something someone has to learn through education through mm. training and whatever but at some point in life you have to realize that for you to be somebody mm-hmm. the first move toward being somebody is to embrace your identity and mm. get you can move from there because you know what will happen yeah whenever you you, you keep lying to yourself about <laughs> your own identity yeah some guy will come sometime somewhere and remind you who you are <laughs> and then it will be blown in your face remembering you reminding you that you are that type of person so yeah. instead of letting mm-hmm. others reminding you who you are yeah. embrace it affirm it and leave it out correct and and i also understand some people they uh do not like to identify themselves with a particular community or with their communities because of past bad experiences uh let's we talk about gossip there's mm-hmm. one that really ruins mm-hmm. any kind of relationship we talk about maybe uh, uh bad mouthy you know mm-hmm. arguments within individuals of the same community so people like to give distance but in as much those things happen i don't think isolation will be one of the the way for you to solve the issue you can face it you can solve it mm-hmm. and in fact it calls for uh, problem uh, resolution mm-hmm. you know uh, problem resolution within the community uh, we now move to an idea that when you talk about spiritual community one needs to understand and respect other people's idea mm-hmm. and this is actually the tough one because it's within us we want to be superior we want to say no my idea of uh, uh, is right yeah so tell, tell tell us more about that sometimes the best outcome of a conversation mm-hmm. is not to win it over mm. it's to understand no you're just speaking wise words <laughs> <laughs> so sometimes the best outcome of the conversation is to understand not wow. to win it over the other mm-hmm. because okay. if you take time to listen you will understand mm. and the other person if you take time to express yourself also the other person will understand you mm-hmm. and the moment you understand each other yeah. it's okay you can move from there mm-hmm. so if we we shift the objective of our conversation uh, or discussion so we shift from one thing to win it over yeah. and to understand it instead you will listen more and later on you will explain what mm-hmm. you think you will understand each other and life would go just smoothly yeah. because we are meant to be different correct we are meant to be diverse mm-hmm. so when we fight over our differences the best thing we can do is to try to understand our differences mm-hmm. the minute we understand it we can collaborate we can move from there wow wow now we we become a little bit more personal if mm-hmm. you don't mind yeah sure um it's your experience as as a student mm-hmm. you you have two faces at is <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. I, i once i was once the, a student and then i left and i come back now as a faculty faculty yeah. so Be- what is the impact of belong- belonging to a spiritual community that you had in your life while you were here at IS? That's the question I knew that would come and then that would <laughs> cause me to say things. You know, I arrived in IS in 2016 mm. as a student and I arrived with my family, so my wife and I. Yeah. And two years later, something very terrible happened to me. My wife suddenly passed away here on campus. Mm. And I was about to finish my coursework and then to prepare for my comprehensive exam. Mm. You know that specific time in yeah. in, in in your studies, yeah, preparation. Ah, yes. preparation for comprehensive exam, and then you are facing that terrible challenge. Mm. And at this time, I had no other countrymen on campus. Mm. All the fellow Asians that were there, they already left. Mm. And I myself, I was traveling uh, to the U.S. when mm. this happened, so they had to call me over the phone mm. to share the, the bad news with me. So I was devastated. And after that one, I went through depression. Mm. And the question was, what will I do with yeah. the rest of my study? Mm. Will I stay in the Philippines all by myself for the first time in my whole life, mm-hmm. being in charge of myself without my family in a foreign country? So the future looked very dark to mm. me, okay. very dark. So I did not know how I was going to move forward. Mm. And at that specific moment, God used community wow, wow. to rescue me. Amen. God used community to rescue me. Mm-hmm.
through their prayers, mm -hmm. their visitations, their support, mm -hmm. and then the love I received from them. Mm -hmm. I remember every now and then some professors, they would call me to their office mm -hmm. to pray with me. Mm -hmm. I, I'm taking of Dr. Cruz at this moment. I'm taking of Dr. Ozolins. Mm -hmm. Those are professors that will pray with me and for me every now and then mm -hmm. to, to help me uh, go through. I remember Dr. Ajash, uh, Victoria Ajash, she will visit me. Mm -hmm. Dr. Song, uh, the, the chaplain, yeah, she uh, will visit me. Yeah. And then the, the support I received from friends, from the Latin community, and then from, from the African community, mm. they will come visit, show support, and ask me whatever I might need uh, as support. And also, I have to think about my community back home that uh, offered support even from a distance, mm. calling me over the phone and then sending me messages. I felt I was not alone Amen. doing that one. Amen. And then by God's grace and by the support of my friends mm. uh, from my communities, the, I could go through that depression time. Yeah. Uh, I would not say smoothly, but at least I could uh, I mm. could get out of it. Yeah, yeah. And I remember when I was, this happened in 2018, mm -hmm. and in 2019, when I was trying to make new friends yeah. and then to see life again, how I could do that, I started to make friends, uh, new friends uh, from the African community mm -hmm. and Latin community. Yeah. We started to go out. You yeah. remember that the time <laughs> we'll go out and yes, eat. Yes, yes. And then this is the time I learned Spanish from them. Yeah. <laughs> and then I see, man, community rescued me wow. by God's grace. Amen. This is how I could see life again, smile again. Yeah, yeah. They would even organize surprise birthday parties for me when, when it's my birthday yeah. because I had no family around to yeah, do that yeah. for me. They did. So I'm um, eternally grateful for communities See. here at IAS because that's, uh, they, were, they are the agent God mm. used mm. to rescue me. Yeah, yeah. yeah, In fact, you said it very well that those are agents that God used. Mm. And one thing that I picked is that it's like you were still in your storm. Mm -hmm. But they made the storm smooth mm -hmm. for you to transition in. Yes. And and I think this is for me is one of the highlights of belonging to a spiritual community. Mm -hmm. And particularly when you find also professors that care for you, mm -hmm. uh, that uh, that come and visit you, come and invite you to pray, come on having a meal with you, mm -hmm. and just to tell you that hey, I may not know what you are what you are going through, but we are here for you. Mm -hmm. And in fact, whatever you want, you can call, not money, but <laughs> yeah, yeah, <laughs> whatever, yeah. you, whatever you need, we are here to give a spiritual support. In fact, uh, and I, I congratulate the, the seminary for, for that stage, for that, uh, for that initiatives, because you mentioned about three or five professors that... Yeah. And also I have to mention my advisor, mm. uh, Dr. Dumitrescu, he understood the situation very wow. well. He understood wow. it and he allowed me some more time to do things. Mm. And those are names I cannot uh, uh, yeah. forget to mention. I almost, I almost asked. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. He offered me support and understanding all mm. the way through. I'm eternally grateful for that one. Yeah, so we see the impact of belonging to a spiritual community. It helps you with come up with your challenges and even be part of, it can also help you in your spiritual growth. We are wrapping up our conversation and, and uh, actually when it comes to an end, we feel that uh, there is more to talk about <laughs> and, and there is actually more to talk about. Yeah. But in a nutshell, uh, what could you suggest? What advice will you give to a graduate? Because this month we are talking about the meaningful of graduate. Uh, graduate life mm -hmm. what uh, suggestion what advice will you give to someone who is listening to you or is listening to us now he, and is struggling to find that spiritual community that community that helps him or her to go through life what advice will you give okay there is a temptation you see the word i use temptation when you are embracing your graduate studies, the temptation is you think the more you isolate yourself mm -hmm. to focus on your activities, on your studies, the faster you will go mm -hmm. and then the best it will be for you. Mm -hmm. Trust me, I tried it, <laughs> it didn't work. <laughs> so as they say, if you want to go faster, go alone. Mm -hmm. But if you want to go further, go. take people with you. Correct. Go with community. Mm -hmm. So my advice would be, as you are navigating your graduate studies, mm -hmm. make room for community life. Correct. Because between 2018, 2019, when I was getting out of my depression and then to re-embrace my, my academics mm -hmm. and then to move forward, community 
were there or was there for me mm. and then it helped me go, go through this is the time i started to get involved into uh mission uh Trip Trips, and, correct. and everything, and I found time for mm -hmm. them and time for my studies, and it worked. Yes, yeah. yes, yes. Yeah, so make sure you find time for community, mm -hmm. and and don't take life. I mean, you can take life too serious, but there's time for everything. I think yeah. that's the passage that I can yeah. I can quote from Ecclesiastes chapter chapter three verses one. There is life for everything under the sun. There's li there's time for you to be very serious with your studies. Mm -hmm. There's also time for you to be. Familiarize with the community members, yeah. and, and 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 when you do so, in fact, it helps you to yeah. to have more ideas. Mm -hmm. Yeah, to have more ideas. Sure. So, sure. Doc, thank you so much for your time. Thank uh, you. We appreciate our conversation, and we 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 wish to have you more. And as we said, we are going to have you probably when you come to discuss about your dissertation, which is for me was very fantastic, and and uh, your presentation. Uh, we have talked about the finding your spiritual community, the importance of of belonging. And within this month, we are talking about meaningful life as a graduate student. So we have now discussed many things and we hope that we find it valuable for you, for your growth, for your community, for you to be part of a particular, a particular community. So we are now going to our advertisement phase. Our advertisement phase is this. Usually we have guests and our guests will always tell us where they come from. We are introduced. Dr. Watland is from the seminary. He's teaching the sem IA seminary and he's a professor of applied theology. So, and he also, um, I, I not say, I'm very tempted to say this, but I will not say this. So Doc, we, can you tell us uh, very briefly two things, why someone, and individuals watching this podcast will say, I want to apply to IS Applied Theology. Why will that person come to your department? First of all, we like to say, and it is true, that Applied Theology is the mother of theology. <laughs> <laughs> so if you are thinking about theology, Applied Theology should be your first choice. Mm -hmm. But more practically, mm -hmm. um, ap Applied Theology, Theologians, so those um, doing their PhDs in applied theology or mm -hmm. their demons, mm -hmm. they are the one uh, who have been trained to be leaders mm -hmm. for the church in terms of administration, understanding church ministry, understanding people in the context of the church. Mm -hmm. So the church is in need of those well-prepared leaders. Mm -hmm. So they know the Bible, but they know people as well. Correct. So that's the balance that applied theology brings in mm -hmm. the context of theology. Not only you know the, the, the Bible, yeah. you know the word, but yeah. you know people Correct. and you know how to deal with people. Mm -hmm. That's why I will invite anyone uh, eager to embrace mm -hmm. uh, graduate studies in the theological field. Yeah. Uh, applied theology should be your first choice if uh, you feel like doing it because those are the ones being prepared for the challenges to come in the wow, church. Wow. So what are the programs that you offered in the applied theology? Yeah, we have masters, several masters mm -hmm. uh, in applied theology. We have in church ministry, we have in mission, and then uh, we we have those MIN, so, mm -hmm. which is master in ministry. We have, we have master in um, uh, church ministry. Correct which is the longer program mm -hmm. and we have MDiv which yeah. is still in the applied theology which is another master's program but a little bit longer yeah. for those without theological background like me. yes <laughs> and then for doctorate uh, degrees we have Demean right. which is a doctorate in ministry mm -hmm. we have also doctorate in mission that we call Demis Demis and we have also PhD in applied theology with several different emphases like church ministry mm. and leadership Wonderful. so some so one has the choice between leadership uh, church ministry or mission mission okay. to to do your your uh, your master or doctorate degrees here wow. at IA. Wow. so we have the wide wide this, um choices i mean uh, possibility of choices yeah, in yeah. the seminary we have the we have the more choices than the other department at wow. the seminary wow wow so if you are considering to come to IAS, particularly in applied Theology, the mother of theology. This is not my word, it's doctor's yeah. words. So consider <laughs> come to the, this department and you can actually visit the IS website, www.is.edu, where you can find all this information. Until then, thank you so much for sticking to us with this podcast if it's not in the syllabus. Bye-bye. <laughs>